Well, the intermolecular attractive forces have a direct impact on what physical state we find uh, compounds in. So uh, let's first talk about how physical state changes occur. Whenever we have a physical state change, it's due to a change in the velocity of the molecules. If you add heat, the molecules move faster. You remove heat, they move slower. You change heat enough, you're going to get a state change. And so remember that an endothermic reaction, you're adding heat, exothermic, heat is being removed. So the exothermic changes are where we're removing heat. And when, if we're in the gas stage, we have molecules moving extremely fast. So the attractive forces can't work between them. By removing heat, they slow down. So then the attractive forces start pulling them together. And they still move pretty quickly, and but they're uh, sticking together so they flow over each other. If you remove even more heat, you slow them even more so that they stick in place and they jiggle in place. The changes of state for exothermic changes are gas going to a liquid, liquid that's condensation, and a liquid going to a solid that's freezing. We have some endothermic changes. When we have slow, slow molecules, you've got a solid because they're stuck to each other and jiggling in place. You add heat and they jiggle faster and faster until they break away from each other, but they're still attracted so they flow over each other in a liquid. Even more heat and they move so fast that the attractions can't hold them in the liquid anymore and they escape as a gas. And the change is there, solid to a liquid is called melting, and then liquid to a gas is called vaporization. If conditions are right, you can skip the liquid phase and you can go directly from a solid to a gas. We call that sublimation. And from a gas to a solid, and that's deposition. Now, molecules from a liquid become a gas even if it's not boiling. There's always going to be some escaping. And the amount that escape depends on the attractive force in the liquid and the temperature of the liquid. The gas, there's always a little bit of gas above a liquid. That gas uh, exerts a pressure whenever you have gas molecules are colliding. And so the gas molecules exert a pressure due to that, those collisions. Because there are always molecules above a liquid and they're exerting pressure, we say that liquids have vapor pressure. That vapor pressure increases as you increase temperature and decreases as you decrease temperature. It's very precise. You can draw a graph showing what would be the vapor pressure for a particular liquid according to temperature. And it gives you a little curve. Well, liquids don't boil when the atmosphere is pressing down on them. You put them in a vacuum and they're going to, uh, you know, pure vacuum like outer space and water would just boil away instantaneously. It's the pressure of the atmosphere that holds liquids down. And the liquids are pressing up against the uh, atmospheric pressure with their vapor pressure. If you ra raise the temperature of a liquid, the vapor pressure rises. And so pretty soon you're going to get the vapor pressure as strong as the atmospheric pressure. So the vapor pressure pushing up equals the atmospheric pressure pressing down. And when that happens, you're going to get molecules inside the liquid changing to vapor spontaneously. And it forms a bubble and it rises to the top. And you've seen that before. It's called boiling. When does boiling occur? Boiling occurs when vapor pressure is equal to atmospheric pressure. The temperature when vapor pressure equals atmospheric pressure is what we call the boiling point. We also have a melting point. A melting point is the temperature when molecules have enough energy to uh, liquefy, break away from the solid. All of this is dependent on how much attraction is between molecules. Now, let me just uh, 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 
eliminate a little bit of confusion here. Chemists use the term boiling point and melting point, and many people don't see that melting point is exactly the same thing as freezing point. We say, at what temperature will water freeze? Well, we all know it's zero degrees Celsius. Well, at what point will ice melt? It's at zero degrees Celsius. You see, it's a transition point, and it's the same regardless of what direction you're going. Boiling points and melting points are directly related to intermolecular attractive forces. So the stronger the intermolecular attractive force, the higher the temperature is needed to make the compound melt or make the compound bo boil. So if I look at this, compounds that have weak dispersion forces, small molecules with only London dispersion forces are going to have very low melting points and boiling points. Whereas compounds that can hydrogen bond, they have high melting points and high boiling points. Here's an example. Methane and water have about the same molar mass. Uh, so their London dispersion forces are about the same. But water is polar and it can hydrogen bond. Let's look at the boiling points. The boiling point of methane is very low. It's way below freezing. In fact, to make it a liquid, you have to pressurize it and cool it quite a bit. Look at water. We call it a high boiling liquid. It has a very high boiling point. Likewise, the melting points are, reflect the strength of the intermolecular attractive forces. Here is another example propane and butane. Propane has a smaller molar mass, butane larger. So they all are nonpolar compounds, so the only intermolecular attractive force they have is London dispersion. Butane has a higher molar mass, so its intermolecular attractive forces are larger. Compare propane to butane, you can see that propane's boiling point and melting point are much lower than that of butane. So now, look at these molecules and determine which one would have the highest melting point. Well, the one with the highest molar mass, they're all nonpolar. The one with the highest molar mass is bromine. It has the greatest intermolecular attractive force, so it will have the highest boiling, uh, melting point and boiling point too. Which molecule has the greatest or greater boiling point? Nonpolar propane, polar dimethyl ether. Nonpolar propane has only London dispersion forces. Polar dimethyl ether has dipole dipole forces. So its boiling point is going to be uh, greater than that of propane. Which of the following has the highest melting point? Well, to do this problem, we look to see are they polar molecules? No, they're not polar. So we're going to know that it's all nonpolar and dispersion force is the only thing to consider and it's proportional to molar mass. So we write down the molar masses and we see that iodine has the greatest one. Fluorine has the smallest. If I look, consider this, then I will say that iodine has the, the highest melting point and fluorine will have the lowest melting point. These two are gases at room temperature. This is a liquid at room temperature and iodine is a solid at room temperature. So which one of these is a polar molecule and that as a result, which would have the lowest boiling point? This is the polar molecule. So the intermolecular attractive force is greater for the ethylene uh, glycol. As a result, the greater intermolecular attractive force here makes the boiling point and melting point higher. For acetylene, it's lower. Acetylene has a lower boiling point. Acetylene is sold in pressurized cylinders. It's a gas at room temperature. 
ethylene glycol, that's the component of antifreeze, and you know it comes as a liquid in a jug. Which molecule has a higher boiling point? This is a polar molecule, excuse me, a nonpolar molecule, and this is a polar molecule. That means that this has the stronger intermolecular attractive force. As a result, its boiling point will be higher. Which has the ability to hydrogen bond and which has the highest melting point? This molecule has the ability to hydrogen bond, so its melting point is what is highest. Order these things by boiling point. We revert to the intermolecular attractive forces. This has London dispersion only. This has London dispersion, dipole dipole, hydrogen bonding. This has London dispersion and dipole dipole. So the order of boiling points is going to be lowest, next, and highest.